Hello and welcome back to Future Studio University. I'm Norman and we will go through describing retrofit endpoints today. So in the past I've often given you a more or less complete description of the endpoint you want to talk to in um, retrofit. So in all of our videos I just quickly write it down but I don't go structurally through it what kind of options you have, how you start writing endpoint descriptions in retrofit. So this is what we will do in this video. All right, so in this video, we will write a bunch of different requests. We won't actually execute them with an example MPI. I just want to focus on writing the endpoint descriptions in Retrofit. So what I'm going to do first is the HTTP method. So whenever you have an HTTP request, there's a method associated with it. For example, it could be get request. Now, as you see up here, you specify a get request by giving it a get annotation. So if you have a method, let's say um, get user information, um, we will say that it's a get request by this annotation up here. Similarly, if we have, let's say, an update user method, this will be either a post or probably even ideally a put request. And there's a bunch more um, kind of HTTP methods. For example, that could be delete. That's also one. So if we do a delete request, we should probably do uh, something like delete user info, or maybe switch it up and say it's delete user. Now, obviously, all of these are incomplete. But I want, what I want to show you here is if you want to describe endpoints with retrofit, you always have to say what kind of HTTP method it is. And you say that by adding an annotation with the same name. So if it's a de delete um, HTTP request, you add the delete annotation to it. Retrofit supports a bunch more. I will give a link to the Wikipedia page with a description of all of these HTTP methods um, in the description below. Now, obviously, these requests are incomplete because we don't say where the request should go to. So we need to say, hey, do this get request. And now we also need to give the URL, for example, up here. Now, if you have seen the first video on Retrofit, you will know that you specify the base URL in the Retrofit client. So you only use ref uh, relative URLs up here. So for example, you could say use the base URL and then add user slash info um, to make it a complete full URL. Now we will do that the same here. Now this could actually be the same URL. The only differentiating factor is what kind of request it is. So the get request to user slash info will get the user info and the put request will update the user info. Now again, these are not complete yet, but we will um, get there. And because we want to delete user, this wouldn't be delete user slash info, it would just be delete user. So what we now have is we describe what kind of HTTP method is and where it actually goes to. So the URL basically. Now you might be wondering, hey, when is there a slash up here and when there isn't? Um, this is actually a topic for a whole another video. I will also link that in the description below. Nevertheless, one of the awesome things of Retrofit 2 is that you can actually provide a full URL here. So if you want to, you could do something like this, and it would completely ignore the base URL. It would just use this URL here specified here. We don't recommend that because in most cases you want to have a consistent um, design like this and use the base URL. Because if the base URL changes, you can just change it in one place and don't have to go through every single um, thing like here. So let's remove this example, but um, you could technically do it. So far, I've always written this function name back here, and that usually confuses people because the function name doesn't matter at all. What you write here is just for you, just for your own explanation that you understand the code. But for retrofit, it doesn't matter at all. You could also call this XYZ, and it would do the exact same thing. So use a function name to make clear to you what this um, call is going to be. And for retrofit, it doesn't really matter. Let's add the semicolons here. 
Now what does matter is you want to describe what the return object, what the response from the server is. And you always do that in retrofit with the call. So you're going to say, you're going to um, return a call object and the type of this call object describes the response. So in this case, get user info, we would expect something like you will get a user info object back. Now I don't have that class in our example project, so I'm just gonna um, quickly create a dummy so the compiler doesn't annoy us. But basically this is a complete um, description of an endpoint. You say it's a get request to this URL and the return um, object is going to be the user info class. And retrofit is okay with this. As I've talked about in previous videos, um, the return type is more or less a critical, the time consuming part, because you have to describe the user info and what kind of properties it has and what kind of structure it has. But not the focus of this video. Um, let's just quickly go on and say, well, what is going to be the return type from an update user? Well, you could imagine that it returns the updated user info. Um, but what you also can do is say, I don't really care about what it returns because I will send a request, it will update it, and whatever the server returns doesn't matter to me. Then you can use void. So Retrofit will just completely ignore what the server um, sends back and only take a look at if it was a successful request or if it was a failed request. Lastly, um, if you don't want to do any mapping and just say, give me just the raw response of the server, you can use response body. Response body is a retrofit class which will take the server response and make it accessible to you, but not do auto, any automatic mapping to Java objects or anything like that. So now we have um, the basic description done, but there's a lot more options you can do with retrofit. And one of them is giving an object to the server. So if you want to send an object to the server, you will usually use the body annotation. And then you will send some kind of Java object, for example, we will again use the user info. And what that does is when we call this request, um, Retrofit will automatically maps this to, for example, JSON to this URL as a put request. And in this case, it will really ignore the server result. So you can use the body annotation to send objects to the server. Now you might be wondering, hey, what is this up here in the curly brackets? So that is a path parameter. So if you have a API location where one thing is dynamic, for example, if you have a social network app and you have a view where you show detailed account information about one user, the URL will be different for each user. And you can dynamically replace this username um, with path parameters. So what you do is you describe a variable with curly brackets around them and then the same variable will be described as a path parameters, again, as an annotation, and then a string. And this doesn't matter, this is only for you. But if you pass a string to here, to this method, it will replace this value up here. You have seen this in action in our first retrofit video, um, the getting started video. So this is also an option in how you can manipulate requests, how you can describe endpoints um, with retrofit. Now there is another kind of parameter. And that is the query parameter. So you will have seen that in the past, maybe even in your browser, when there's something like a question mark and then um, something like order and then like descending or something like that. So these are query parameters. And you can also create them automatically with Vatapet. And it's pretty easy. You will just add another um, parameter up here and that is um, the query annotation for query um, parameter. You describe this part. So this is the order here. And then again, you will pass a string parameter for this. So if you pass descending, it will exactly build this URL. It will add the order query parameter um, with a value of descending. Now you could add even more here and it will just automatically add it in the correct um, way to this request. So query parameters are an excellent way, often necessary for APIs. There is one last option I want to show you in this video, and that is a URL option. So earlier in this video, I've shown you, well, sometimes maybe you want to pass a full URL up here. Um, 
That works if you know it before you compile to the app, but what if it's dynamic? For example, the app should download a profile image or just an image in general where you only know the URL during the runtime. Now Retrofit also supports that, and that is you will delete the URL here completely. You will say, I don't know um, the URL during, um, before compile, you only know it during runtime. So let's say get profile, photo, and what you're going to do is you're going to pass the URL as a parameter to the function. And you will say um, it's a URL annotation, it's going to be a string of a type, and then let's say just URL. So when you call this endpoint um, for Metrofit, you will simply pass the full URL um, to, to the function in uh, Retrofit will makes a request. Now obviously this should be a get request, um, not a delete request. Anyway, that's it for this week. You should have taken away um, some basic understanding of what options you have if you want to describe endpoints with Retrofit and what kind of manipulations you can do fairly easy um, with these kind of parameters. If you want to see more videos in our Retrofit series, make sure to give this video a like, then we will know you will have to make more of this. Also subscribe if you want to see those videos. Enjoy coding and make it work.